Good morning. Welcome to today's webinar event. My name is Joshua and I'm going to be your presenter. I hope everybody can hear me okay. It is promptly 11.30 a.m. Eastern Time and uh, we're going to go ahead and get started on our webinar event here momentarily. A uh, few technical things before we get started. Uh, we're going to, you know, the event is scheduled to last till 10 minutes till noon here. Uh, about 20 minutes. Uh, I will do my best to keep within that 20 minute time frame. You know, just to be respectful of your time joining us today. Um, where, wherever we are, I generally will end there, if not earlier, and see what we can't do to answer questions for folks about things. Um, Speaking of questions, if you have questions for me, please type those into the questions portion of the webinar control panel. I'll do my best to keep an eye on those. Um, we'll see what we can't do to get those answered, repeat those for everybody's benefit, and try to answer those for you. Uh, please keep the questions on topic, meaning about our accounting subtotals topic today. There may be another webinar event that's more suited for the other questions you have, or of course uh, our support staff are available and happy to help. Uh, today and uh, through Friday um, of each week. So please give us a call, a call if you have other questions or another event. Webinar event is not set up to answer those questions for you. We are recording today's webinar event. Uh, the video will be available on our website here sometime within the next 24 to 48 hours, if not sooner. Um, there is a video out on the Support Center now that's on subtotals. It's probably from 20 or 21. Frankly, folks, the subtotals feature hasn't changed that terribly much over the course of the you know, past several few years. So the video that's out there on the website would still offer enormous amount of insight until we get the, and, you know, the recording of today's event up there. But again, that should be with you know, fairly quick, quickly here. Um, we're here to talk about accounting subtotals. The workbook we're using today is A102, pages 22 to 27. Um, if you uh, are interested in purchasing the workbooks, you can go and purchase those directly from our website. Now, I think we do have actually a pretty great sale running on those right now. Um, please call us if you didn't get that email from us, um, or you can go right to the uh, right to the uh, shop on the Church Windows uh, shop, and, and and everybody gets those. I think those uh, those uh, five dollar workbooks. Um, I think we have the flash sale that's running through the end of this week on that. So again, A102, pages 22 to 27. So let's talk about subtotals for a moment. Um, our subtotals make financial reports and accounting reports easy to read because they group and categorize accounts on your reports you know, for easier comprehension and understanding and totals. Things like total salaries and total office expenses and, you know, Total, total income and total donations income or, you know, basically any accounts can be included in a particular subtotal that's within their particular account type, okay? There's a lot of flexibility in using subtotals, okay? So if we go up to, say, manage accounts here at the top left, and then below that, we should see the option labeled subtotals right here, okay? Everybody should see that. Um, there's our subtotals. And so when we click on that subtotals option, it opens up our subtotals window, and we're going to collapse all. We have some you know, subtotals set up and constructed in our training data. But when you purchase an open church windows accounting and set it up for the very first time, there are just the five main subtotals here. Total assets, total liabilities, total fund balance, total income, and total expenses. There are no other subtotals added within those. Okay, you construct the subtotals within, say, total expenses or total income or what have you. Okay, Church Windows doesn't pre-construct those. Okay, um, so the, the, the creation or the addition of a subtotal always starts with choosing the subtotal that you're wanting to add a particular subtotal to. So let's say within our total assets, We've got some fixed assets on our balance sheet, and we want to create a subtotal in our assets called um, total fixed assets. So we click on the arrow called total assets, okay? And then we're going to click the button down here in the bottom right, the bottom left corner, my other right, labeled add new subtotal, okay? 
And notice now it adds a new arrow in there below total assets with the word total and our cursor flashing in the upper right hand uh, corner here in the menu called subtotal or subtotal name, excuse me. Okay, so it adds the word total and we're going to call this one total fixed assets. Okay. We can also then introduce this, the accounts that are in the subtotal by clicking and checking the box called display as header. So if I check that box and we basically just type in fixed assets, this, this heady, header will be labeled fixed assets and it'll appear above the actual accounts within the subtotal. Okay? This is optional, it's not required. Some folks do use display as header, some don't. But basically, you no longer need what used to be called the header accounts. Basically, you know, folks would add accounts because they're, and they would put bold, you know, the name in there is bold because it was an attempt to basically introduce the accounts that we're following. Well, now we've got this display as header option. Header accounts are not required, okay? So creating subtotals is also a, a two-step process. We have to create the subtotal. And then we have to move the accounts that, are, that belong inside that subtotal into that. So we've taken care of step one here by creating the subtotal itself. Okay? So now that we've added that, we're going to go right down here to the very bottom. Let me get my highlighter, and we're going to click on the button down here called Show Accounts. Okay? Now you know, we're going to manipulate the accounts and move them into that. So we're going to click Show Accounts. Now all of our accounts are displayed. We're going to click Collapse All again, and we're going to click the plus sign next to Total Assets. And what do you know? The two fixed asset accounts are displayed right here at the very top. The system knows their assets, but it doesn't know that they belong in Total Fixed Assets. Well, that's what we're here to do is to move those into that. Okay? So we have two options for moving accounts into subtotals. We can either drag and drop, so I can pick up land and buildings and drag it down and drop it into the fixed uh, total fixed assets, total fixed assets subtotal. Subtotals are always represented by arrows, folks. Accounts have a little sheet of paper icon with the account name and the account number, if applicable, after the name. Okay, so we're going to pick up land and buildings. We're going to hold down our left mouse button and we're going to drag that down. And notice we just keep saying, nope, you can't do this. We're going to drag it, and we're going to put it right on top of the arrow or the line that says total fixed assets. Let go of our mouse button. And notice now land and buildings is now residing under our arrow called total fixed assets. Okay, So that's option number one. But if you've got a lot of accounts or subtotals, the drag and drop can be a little bit tricky. Okay, The other option you have is we can highlight the account, in this case furniture and equipment, and then we're going to move our focus over here to the right where it says move furniture and equipment to. And we're going to click the down arrow here on the right hand side. Let me get back to my normal drawing tool here. Click the down arrow. Right here we choose total fixed assets. And then right below that we click the button that says move account. And you'll see that account will move down now under our in, again, fixed asset subtotal. Okay, so we've done the two steps. We've added the subtotal, and we've moved the respective accounts into that subtotal. Okay, so let's go see what that looks like now on our balance sheet. So we're going to close out of our subtotals window. We're going to go up to reports. We're going to go to balance sheet. Uh, we're going to simply whoop. We're fine. We click print. And now we should see our fixed asset subtotal on our balance sheet right here. Let me zoom in a little bit here. Right here we see our header text on the left here, fixed assets. We see the to subtotal itself that totals those accounts and the subsequent accounts that are inside that subtotal. Okay, So we've done everything correctly. But just in FYI, this is what the header text looks like is it shows italicized and it appears above the very first account within the subtotal itself. Okay. Let's go back to our subtotals window for just a couple min or another minute here. There's a couple of other things I want to show you real fast. Okay, so the other thing to keep in mind is you have the ability to control subtotal control the order of subtotals themselves. So let's say for some reason I wanted my total fixed assets to appear above my total current assets and investments. I highlight that either one of them, 
So I can highlight total current assets and investments, and over here on the right-hand side, we see the up and down arrows, okay? So if I click on the little uh, down arrow there, I can move and switch the order of those subtotals. I go, oh, no, that's not true. I want my fixed assets to appear at the bottom. I can just hit click on either one of them, and it all depends on which one you want to move. Just push the up arrow, and I've now put my current assets and investments back to where they were, okay? So let's look at another something else here. So if, say, we go down to our expenses, notice now we've got a plus sign next to our total salaries and in benefits. So notice we've got subtotal within a subtotal, okay? So what that means is, is you can have subtotals totaling into other subtotals. Essentially, that's what's occurring with your other subtotals when they're totaling into total expenses. But say within our total salaries and benefits, we could have total pastor salaries, total lay staff, and so we can have several subtotals. In fact, you can drill down, I believe, four levels deep on your subtotals. Okay, so within total expenses, you can have three levels deep of subtotals within those that all then subsequently total back into our total expenses. Okay, so that's what we mean about how you've got a, a very, a completely different level of flexibility when using subtotals versus, say, subaccounts and subledgers, where you don't have that ability to do that. Okay, you can have one level deep, okay, but subtotals, folks, simply make reports easier to understand and comprehend for folks, okay? So let's take a quick look at our treasurer's report, okay? So we're going to go to simply print, and we're going to go down to our expenses down here, and we're going to look at those. You know, so right here, we've got a ledger with subaccounts for senior minister salary and associate minister, and those accounts are all subtotaled into our subtotal here called total pastor salary and benefits right here. So all of our pay pastor's compensation expenses are grouped and included in that subtotal. Okay? So then those, including all of the other ledgers for the other staff that I have, also total into the one called total salaries and benefits. Okay? So if I want to, I can go in and create a subtotal for those within that. Let's walk through that again. So we go back in, we're going to click Collapse All, we're going to click on our plus sign, we're going to highlight total salaries and benefits. Again, you choose the subtotal with the, to which you're adding or you're creating the new subtotal inside of it. We click Add New Subtotal. We're going to call this Total Lay Staff Salaries. and benefits. I can choose display as header. And we then now have to go down and click our show accounts. We're going to collapse all. We're going to go down here and we're going to choose, you know, like musician salaries. And again, I can expand that. See, here's our other salaries and benefits that we've got, again, outside of that. So we have to pick up our all of our lay staff, and we've got to move these various accounts, even the ledgers, into the actual subtotal itself. Okay? I'm just quite used to the whole drag and drop function, folks, but again, don't forget, over on the right, um, we can now highlight a particular account, go to our down arrow, choose lay staff salaries and benefits, move account, and the process continues ad nauseum until all of those expenses are inside our salaries and or st lay staff salaries and benefits. Okay. And administrator. And there we go. So now let's go back and take a look and see what that looks like on our treasurer's report. All right, so now when we go down into our expenses, we're again going to see our senior pa our pastors. There's the total salaries and benefits. Now we see another one at the bottom that says total lay staff, so it totals all of those accounts within there and their subledgers and includes everyone's totals 
down here on the bottom. Let me just kind of steer some focus here, get some control, zoom in just a little bit. But right over here on the right, we've got our lay staff. So we've got theirs as the 29,000 right here, but all of our salaries and benefits with our ministers totals the 47, 743, 85, okay? So, different level of flexibility, okay? All right, with just a few more minutes left, there's a couple of other things we want to discuss real quick here. Let me get rid of my drawing tools, or my drawing here. That's adding a subtotal and then reordering them. To edit a subtotal, all you have to do is go back to the subtotals window where we were, manage accounts, subtotals. Uh, again, either use the search if necessary and find the subtotal that you're wanting. Uh, so if we go basically, okay, I want to go back into my salaries and benefits, and I want to edit my, say, header text on my lay staff. So I go right here, lay staff compensation. I've edited that. Or I just click in the subtotal name and just change it right here. And that changes it for your reports. Okay? So you can edit both the subtotal name or the header text, um, your choice, um, either one, but just by simply coming into the subtotals window if you wish. At the bottom of page 25 on our workbook pages, it does talk about arranging the order of the subtotal. So same thing, I can reorder subtotals at the same level pretty much at will, okay? Um, you know, so I would do this, could do the same thing here. Let's say I want total utilities to appear below property and building. I just highlight that, push the down arrow. It's now changed the order on my reports, okay? And so finally here, to delete a subtotal. So notice here, you know, when I click on a particular subtotal in the list, if we steer our focus down to the very bottom, we notice delete subtotal is not available. Well, why is that? Well, the reason is quite simple. I can't delete a subtotal if it has accounts inside of it. Okay? So in order to be able to delete a subtotal, I have to deal with the accounts that are in it. So I just, if I say I want to delete one, if I go, oh, well, I don't want my fixed asset subtotal anymore, I have to go down and click show accounts click the plus sign, I have to move the accounts out, in this case we'll move them back up into total assets, or I could move them into total current assets and investments too. Once that has no plus sign next to it, I can highlight the subtotal, and we now notice that the delete subtotal button is lit up and available for us to choose at the bottom. We simply click on that, and it deletes the subtotal. Okay? Um, all right, well, with just about a minute left, folks, that is our topic for today.